Hello Pokemon trainers, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video. Here on iStarly TV, this is part of my Road to Master series where I try to climb the online ranked Battle Stadium singles ladder. And I'm back after a little bit of a hiatus because of course the DLC came out a few days ago, so I've been doing a lot of videos covering that and I've been playing that a lot. And I haven't done one of these videos in a, in a little while. I don't remember when the last time was. It was probably over a week ago. I don't remember off the top of my head. But either way, it's good to be back. Uh, we are near the end of this season and this series, this rule set. So as of January, f I think it's January 4th actually, which is kind of a weird date. But as of January, we will have a brand new format with a bunch of new Pokemon as well as a bunch of returning Pokemon. So I'm really, really excited for that. I'm gonna be building a ton of teams. It feels like the meta will shift significantly, but I mean, who knows, you know, right now we have the same old Pokemon dominating the meta like Fluttermane, Chen Pao, Goldengo, Dragonite, Urshifu, etc, etc, etc. So hopefully some of the new and returning Pokemon that are coming into the new meta will be enough to shake things up. So I actually, unfortunately, I have a new team today, but unfortunately I do not have a team code for it. Now, if you are interested, if enough people are interested, you can let me know in the comments and I will go ahead and make a team code and I'll update the pinned comment um, with the team code if you're interested in this team. But, you know, since I, I kind of figured since it's nearing the end of the season, like this team code would probably only be relevant for like the, the remaining two weeks of this format. And then as of January, it will be obsolete. So. Uh, I just kind of figured like once January and the new form format comes around, I'm going to be making a ton of new teams. So I'll be kind of basically removing all of my current team codes because those teams will be pretty much irrelevant because there are go there's going to be a lot of new Pokemon that are going to be viable and, and new moves and everything. So with that being said, let's get to the team. This is a team that I built uh, kind of a while ago on Showdown that I had been testing with and I just kind of never really got around to featuring it in a video. And the team is focused on Ribombi or Ribombi, Ribombi, however you want to say it, uh, which is not that great of a Pokemon, unfortunately. It came out in Sun and Moon and it's pretty cool, like it's pretty fast, but obviously it's not fast enough for this meta and it doesn't hit that hard, but it does have access to a couple important, uh, I don't know, features that really help the team. So not notably, it has Sticky Web. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the fastest Sticky Web user in the game or in the metagame. I could be wrong on that, but uh, the, the goal with it obviously is to set up Sticky Web, which helps my other Pokemon later on because the opposing team will have their speed lowered anytime they switch into battle. As long as they are Pokemon who can touch the ground, I guess. <laughs> so Dragonite would not, you know, be affected either way. But we also have access to Quiver Dance and Baton Pass. So, you know, once we get up those sticky webs, we can Quiver Dance and maybe Baton Pass those boosts to something else. Or we can just Quiver Dance and start spamming Moonblast, which is a pretty good move. So a lot of options here. And in testing, it's it's been pretty decent, honest, honestly. Um, it also has Sweet Veil as an ability, which prevents it from falling asleep, which can be useful against Pokemon that have Yawn, as well as Breloom with Spore. So yeah, I've been having pretty good success with Breloom. I'm sorry, with Ribombi. Um, from there, the only other Pokemon that's kind of unique is Dark Urshifu, which is a Pokemon that doesn't need too much explanation because Urshifu is just really good in general. But this one's Terra, or I'm sorry, this one's the Dark variant, the uh, Single Strike, I think it's called. Whereas the Rapid Strike, the water one, is the one that sees a lot of play. This one's still really good though, and with Black Glasses, it hits really hard with the Wicked Blow. It has Swords Dance to set up. Um, I actually realized I should probably give it some PP up for that Wicked Blow, but we'll see how this turns out. <laughs> All of its moves have five power points, but hopefully that's fine. Um, and it's just max, oops, uh, max special, or I'm sorry, max attack and max speed with a Terra Poison type because that helps me switch off of my weaknesses such as weakness to fairy and weakness to fighting most importantly so if if the opponent has a pokemon of those types which are pretty common then i can just terra and and just do a ton of damage and setup and urshifu's speed tier is such that it's kind of fast but also slower than a lot of the most common threats so with the sticky web i can be faster than most everything uh, from there we have Volcarona, which I've used in the past. It's a really good Pokemon, you know, just bulky Volcarona. It sets up Quiver Dance and then, you know, it ter terastalizes to remove its weaknesses. It has Flame Body, which is really good. And then it can just sweep with Fiery Dance and Terra Blast and it can heal itself with Morning Sun. So good Pokemon. 
Uh, then I have a Salt Vest Ursa Luna, which is really good. And this one, the EV spread is a little different than I've run in the past. It's just max special attack and max special defense. It already has a naturally high HP stat and pretty good defense as well. So by maxing out the special defense, because otherwise its special defense is not that great. So maxing out special defense alongside having the Assault Vest really helps boost the special defense stat so that it's really well-rounded and then it can just hit really hard with its moves. Uh, Ursa Luna is another Pokemon that doesn't really need too much more explanation. Finally, we have uh, Terra Flying Roaring Moon, which is also pretty standard. You know, we go into the battle, uh, use our booster energy, boost our speed, and then we can use acrobatics with the Terra Flying Boost to do a lot of damage. Um, when I was testing with this team, I had Earthquake. Honestly, I don't have enough for another Earthquake team and I didn't want to spend time farming for one. So we'll see how this works out with these moves. Um, I kind of thought like this, this seems okay. Like a Pokemon that I would want Earthquake against would be something like Goldango or Garganacle. And I have Knockoff and Iron Head for both of those respectively. So I might not need Earthquake, but we'll see. I might end up regretting that. Finally, we have a bulky Goldango with Nasty Plot and Shadow Ball, you know, pretty standard stuff here. So let's get to some games. Game number one here, we have a pretty interesting team here. My opponent has Cloyster, Empoleon, and Meowskarata, which are Pokemon that you don't typically see. Meowskarata used to be really good. Um, Empoleon's also a Pokemon that is uh, pretty good. Like, it's it's kind of underrated. And then finally, Cloyster's also pretty solid. So I guess even though you don't see them very often, they're still pretty solid. Um, I definitely just, just kind of, even just looking at those three, I really like Ursa Luna. Um, Ursa Luna is great against Cloyster because I have Vacuum Wave and Cloyster's special defense is really bad. So I, I want to bring Ursa Luna here. It's also good against Goldango. Um, Dragonite is one Pokemon that's going to be a problem though. I guess another question is, do I want to set up uh, the Sticky Web with Ribombi? And honestly, I don't. Two of their biggest threats are Flying types and... Everything else, like they have a couple steel types for the Moonblast, so I think sent, I think leading with Rabombi is just kind of uh, bad here. Um, so let me think. Do I would I ever lead with Urshifu? I'm trying to think who I should lead with because their most likely leads are either Empoleon, Cloyster, or Meowskarata. Yikes. Um, I don't know. All right. Well, I'm running out of time here. I really just don't like that Dragonite, but I'm just gonna bring these three. They seem like they're pretty solid and they can handle most situations, but honestly, I just kind of didn't give myself enough time to, to really plan something good there. So we're gonna see how this goes, because they have a few potentially annoying leads. Sometimes people who run Cloyster actually do lead with it, and that can be really tough, because if I don't have a Pokemon that's good against Cloyster, it can just destroy me right off the bat. By the way, I have an awesome new trainer card, Smeargle, one of my favorite Pokemon. I shiny hunted one and I just had to get a good picture of it. So I imagine that'll that'll be my trainer card for a long time because I just love Smeargle. Anyways, uh, they lead me out Skarada, which is, <coughs> which is, yeah. let's see. I think that's fine. Let me see. So I'm slower than them for sure. They could go flower trick, which would do a lot of damage. I could terastalize, but I'm not sure that's worth it right now. I think I'm in a close combat. They could go like Toxic Spikes as well. I wonder if I ever go Sticky or a uh, Wicked Blow here because they might Toxic Spikes, which would change them to a Poison type. This might be really weird, but I'm just going to Wicked Blow given that they have Protein. Wow, they go for Play Rough and they miss. Oh, wait, no, sorry, they don't miss. Never mind. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they didn't miss. It's because it's because nothing happened when it said they used Play Rough, so usually that means they missed, but that also happens when they um, when they get their, what's it called, their uh, Protean boost. So off to a really, really rough start here. I could have Terrastalized there. That was something I was kind of considering, but it always feels bad to Terra right away. Now we know they have play rough. We know they have a grass type move. They probably have a strong dark type move. They might they might not though. I think flower trick is kind of a must on Meowskarata. So we are likely to resist at least two of their moves. I think I'm just gonna go for fiery dance here. If they have a dark type move though, that's gonna be really rough. They go U-turn, which is pretty surprising because I could, wow, exactly, because I could burn them with flame body. So that ends up being really bad for my opponent. Um, if that were the case, they probably should have just switched. They they didn't really need to U-turn there. Maybe they were scouting the damage, but I don't think the risk is worth it given that I have Flame Body. And I'm assuming my opponent was aware of that. So they, they just took a big risk there and it ended up 
really hurting them because they got burned. Uh, so now I'm still going for the Fiery Dance here, which is pretty good because they go into Zapdos, so it means we're going to get some damage on them. And I could just start setting up Quiver Dances. Of course, with Zapdos here, I think it's pretty likely that they have... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's pretty likely that they have, like, Hurricane... Or I'm assuming they have, like, Hurricane. They could also just have, like, Discharge or even Eerie Impulse, which is something that I've seen before. Do I ever just go into... Urso Luna here? Let me see. What... How does Volcarona look against the rest of their team? If their last Pokemon's Cloyster, I'm not really happy about that, but I'm just going to go into Ursaluna here. I guess I guess this is actually not a great play because if they go Impulse, because Impulse was one of the moves that I was most worried about, and if they just go for Eerie Impulse, uh, that's bad against my Ursaluna. They do go Hurricane though, so that ends up being decent for me. However, they do get a critical hit, which does a ton of damage. Um, I think I'm free to just click Blood Moon now, though, because I don't think they have a good switch in. Um, my plan is to Terrastalize Volcarona, so really my plan is to use Volcarona to kind of win this game. Um, but like I said, I can get a lot of damage on whatever comes in here, and if it's Meowskarata, they're they're dead. And I think they I think they know this because you know they're they're burned, so they probably figure their Meowskarata is not going to have much value. And since I have Volcarona, Volcarona is really good against Meowskarata, so they probably just figure that they don't really have much going on or much going for their Meowskarata. Um, so good play on their part. Now I'm terrified of a Dragonite. That's probably the one Pokemon I'm most worried about. And of course that's the last Pokemon they have. Uh, why wouldn't they have Dragonite, right? Uh, so I could like Vacuum Wave to break their multi-scale. I'm just going to start with a Hyper Voice though to break the multi-scale. And we'll just kind of see what they do. They're, they could Dragon Dance. They could Fire Sp I mean Dragonite is just so versatile. There are so many things they can do here. But we know... Actually, we don't know that. I was going to say we know they don't have Eerie Impulse, but they could still have it. Um, they go Outrage, though, which is actually perfect because... Wow, this is actually really, really good for me. I'm assuming they're Choice Banded, which also... Actually, the fact that they're Choice Banded is pretty scary, but... Now I can go back into Volcarona, and the fact that I was patient with my Terrastalize really pays off here because I am Terra Fairy, which means I get a free Quiver. I get at least one free Quiver Dance here. Uh, probably two, which is huge, absolutely huge. The problem is their Dragonite is going to be really scary when it comes back in. So what's going to happen here is they're going to Outrage again because they're locked into it, which I'm going to completely you know, resist or I'm, I'm immune to. Um, so I get a free Quiver Dance. We know that we're faster than them as well, which is important. Um, and then they're going to have to switch out into Zapdos, which means that I get another free Quiver Dance, which means that Volcarona is really well positioned against both of their Pokemon now, which is fantastic because I am at I will be at plus two special defense, plus two special attack, and then I will also... Um, or, or I'm also invested in HP and defense, so I already naturally have a pretty good um, defensive stat. They are staying in, though. I wonder if they're not choice banded. They could, they could be not choice banded here. If they are choice banded and they're just sacrificing their Dragonite, though, this is just amazing for me. <gasps> they go Dragon Dance. What? Okay. That was really greedy of me then. So I'm still a little confident here, though. I think I just go Terra Blast. Fi Fiery Dance would be an option to boost my special attack potentially and break their multi skill, and then the the subsequent Terra Blast would would likely knock them out. But I think I just want to go Terra Blast. However, they could also Terrastalize here, and that's probably what they're gonna do. Um, they don't though, so something we're gonna have to keep in mind on this next turn is the fact that they can Terra. That does more than half, though, which is perfect. I, I kind of don't think it matters. If they hurt themselves in Confusion, I think I win for sure. They do. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. GG. I'm, I'm really happy to, to take this game. I mean, it's not over yet, but it's probably over, right? They're going to finally Terra, but luckily, since they're so low on health and we know we're faster than them, they're probably Terra normal and they can extreme speed, so I guess that's something going for them. But I feel like I can survive because I'm at... Pretty close to full health. We'll see, actually. You never know. They snap out of their confusion now, which is good for them. I could lose here. <laughs> it's not over yet, everyone, but if I survive this, I do survive. Perfect. I do feel pretty confident about the remainder of this battle. I think when they go into Zapdos, I'm going to have to Morning Sun to heal and just kind of scout how much their moves, do, their, their moves do. 
Um, I'm assuming they're gonna go for like Thunderbolt or Discharge, whatever electric type move they have. This is still not over yet, actually. I, I definitely could lose this battle. Um, I was just thinking that like, I would knock them out with that, that with their Dragonite. Um, I think I have to Morning Sun because if I don't kill, at the same time, it's possible Terra, Terra Blast just knocks them out. I'm trying to remember what did that much damage. I think Terra Blast knocks them out here actually because my Fiery Dance did that much damage and that was unboosted. That was before I had set up any Quiver Dances. I'm just going to take the risk. This is going to be, if I lose because of this, I am going to feel so dumb, but I think I knocked them out because I'm at plus two now and this Terra Blast is effectively stab as well, but let's see. If I don't knock them out, I guess there's a chance. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I guess there's a chance I might live whatever move they go for, but like, I guess if they go Hurricane and Miss, I, that, that's an option, but we do win that one. That's pretty close. I just figured with the, the damage that Fiery Dance did before we were boosted and then now we are boosted and Terra Blast is the same base power as Fiery Dance, you know, I just kind of figured it, it would knock them out. So good game, good game number one. I was definitely, after that first turn when my when my Urshifu got knocked out, I was not feeling like I was in a good spot. But I mean, these Pokemon are really strong. We got to show off the power of Volcarona, which I guess doesn't need that much explanation. Ursaluna is another Pokemon that doesn't need much, much explanation. But like I said, Dark Urshifu doesn't see quite that much play because Water Urshifu is just better. <laughs> but uh, Dark Urshifu is still very good. So let's go to game two. And we are on game number two now. My opponent's team is still pretty good here. They have Gardevoir, which is a Pokemon you definitely don't see a lot. I used it when Scarlet and Violet first came out and it actually was in a pretty good spot in that meta. But now I think it's just outclassed by so many things, but it's still interesting. Mimikyu's good, Rotom, solid. Yeah, they have a solid team. Uh, I guess the, the first question I like to ask is about Ribombi. Do we want to bring that? And I kind of do. Um, as far as potential leads, they do have Empoleon, which is my least favorite. Empoleon's definitely something I don't want to face with Rebombi, but everything else seems okay for me. And if we can get up Sticky Web, it's pretty good against like Ogre Pond and Gardevoir. I guess the question is, who else do I want to bring here? Because that might determine what else we do here. Like, I really like Roaring Moon, but at the same time... They look like they have some Pokemon that could burn Roaring Moon, which I definitely do not like. I also like Goldango, but that Ogre Pond is scary. I think we need an answer to Ogre Pond. And so because of that, I do want to bring this because if we can get up Sticky Web, then Ogre Pond is going to be a good amount easier to deal with. Um, I also just think I want to bring Ursa Luna because it's good. And then the final question then is, who else do I bring? And I think that might just be Volcarona. So Ursa Luna and Volcarona showing off their prowess in this video. <laughs> um, we also get to show Rebombi, like I said, because we're going to lead with it. You know, I feel like it's pretty likely they lead with Empoleon. If they do, that's pretty unfortunate because it's not a great matchup for me. But if they lead with anything else, it is a good matchup. And even if they lead Empoleon, I can get up Sticky Web and then maybe set up a Quiver Dance or two and then Baton Pass it into something else, which can be really good. They do lead, lead Empoleon. One problem here is that they can get up Stealth Rock. However, um, my Volcarona has heavy duty boots, so it's immune to Stealth Rock. And then of course, Ursa Luna resists it because it's a ground type. So yeah, we get to get up that sticky web, which is gonna be good. And then I, we'll see what they do here. I am immune to Yawn effectively. They just go for the Flash Cannon, which I guess makes sense. I could just Baton Pass now. I feel like it's pretty likely they're gonna they're gonna just knock, I hope they actually just knock me out. Actually, let's just click Moonblast. I know it's not gonna do much damage, but we might lower their special attack. If they just go Stealth Rock, that's kind of unfortunate, but I don't really wanna switch anything into this Flash Cannon. Okay, they do go Serve, which is nice. Um, I, it looks like they might've actually been predicting a switch there. Now, the big question is, which Pokemon am I gonna Terrastalize here? And I think there's good options for both. It could just be Ursa Luna. Ursa Luna. We would get off an Earth Power here, and if we do that, we do not. We're not. We're uh, we're no longer weak to Surf. Or we could go Volcarona here. No, I think it's Ursa Luna. The thing about Volcarona is if I Terrastalize, because obviously, if we 
stay as a fire type, we are weak to surf. And then if we terrestrialize, we're still neutral to surf. And then after that, they can just click flash cannon. So I think we're just better off doing this. I am gonna go ahead and terrestrialize, like I said, to go ahead and remove that water type weakness. And look how huge it is. <laughs> uh, and earth power should do a lot of damage. By the way, my outfit's pretty cool. It's the Blueberry Academy uh, uniform. And then the, the headgear is like a, a rare item that you can buy after you do a little side quest with uh, Team Star. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make a video on that. But they go for Surf and we take that really well. Of course, we are Assault Vest and we're gonna go for the Earth Power, which does completely knock them out. It's really good for us. Um, this does give them the Switch initiative. So they get to go into whatever is gonna be good against Ursaluna. Again, thinking of their team, I'm, I don't think they have too many things that are like scary for Volcarona. And this is one thing that's not super scary. Um, they get the sticky web there, which in this situation doesn't matter because <laughs> um, I should have gone earth power there. It doesn't matter because I think Ursaluna is so slow that they're probably still faster than me. I should have gone Earth Power there because there was the chance that I could lower their special defense. So going for Hyper Voice here honestly is not fantastic for me. Now with Mimic You in, they could go Trick Room possibly, although they don't really have any Pokemon that benefit from Trick Room, so I doubt they're going to do that. They just go Play Rough, and we take that really well. Yeah, that's actually great. I'm really happy to see that. Um, like I said, I really regret not going for the Earth Power here, but we can click Hyper Voice once again. We know now that if they go for Play Rough again, we are going to absolutely take that. Uh, they have an item. Is it Red Card? Yeah, it is Red Card, which I am fine with because we have Volcarona. Okay, given the Sticky Web, I actually think I want to just go for Fiery Dance here, not Quiver Dance. I'm not afraid of Mimic You. Oh, we are faster, which is nice. Um, we resist Play Rough. Do we get the attack boost? Yes, we do. Perfect. That means our second Fiery Dance is going gonna, is gonna to knock them out. They go Thief, though, which is really interesting. That's an interesting move for Mimic You. That's kind of a weird one, to be honest. But this puts us, puts us in a really good position. Um, they could get off a little bit of extra damage here with the Shadow Sneak, but... Honestly, I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that they're burned and I'm just going to go ahead and quiver dance here. I don't think there's anything they can do to me that would really like ruin my chances of setting up. And this quiver dance means that if they go into Ogre Pond afterwards, we're going to be able to do a lot more damage against them. So I, I feel like this is kind of free because they're burned. So we know that they're not doing much damage to us. They do get a critical hit there, which is rough, but I'm going to go ahead and go for Morning Sun now. Um, I don't want to mess around too much. I do I do think right after this, I'm just going to knock them out with the next Fiery Dance, but um, like we definitely want to be as healthy as possible for whoever their last Pokemon is. If it's Ogre Pond, I'm, I'm afraid of that. If it's anything else, I actually feel pretty confident with the rest of the battle. Um, they haven't shown Shadow Sneak, which is good. Do they have it? Wow, they switch. Okay, well that Mimikyu is kind of dead weight. So whatever they go into is going to take a lot of damage here. And it is Landorus, which that's perfect. That's great. Um, if they're Scarf, though, this could be a real problem. I guess it just doesn't matter. Okay, never mind. Uh, I think that's GG because if they knock, if they're Scarfed and they knock me out here, um, then we can go into Ursaluna and knock them out with the Vacuum Wave. And then Mimikyu would come in. It is burned. We could just click Hyper Voice at that point and then just end the game. So that was a nice one. Good games there. And I'm, I'm actually gonna end it there, but the team was looking really good. So if you wanna try it out yourself, I will put the Poke Paste in the description so you can try out all the movesets. But like I said, if if you are interested in, in trying this team out yourself, if you want me to make a team code, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if enough people do, if a couple people do, honestly, if like more than one person says that they want a team code, I will make a team code. <laughs> um, that's all it takes is just at least two people to say that they're interested and I will make a team code for you all and I'll just post it in the comments as well. But for right now, like I said, since we're nearing the end of this season, I just figured like, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'm just going to be deleting that team code anyway. But like I said, if you're interested, I will be happy to make one. Um, there's a lot of Pokemon. I'm starting to kind of like make a mental list of all the Pokemon I want to try out when the new season comes around. One of the number one Pokemon I, I need to try out is Blaziken. I miss this Pokemon so much. It's going to be so good with speed boost. I don't like the way it looks there, though. It's just standing all straight. Um, but yeah, Blaziken's amazing. The new Paradox Pokemon are amazing. Um, these two are great, but most importantly, I love the, the Legendary Beast 
Paradox Pokemon. I'm just, oh, Smeargle, like I said, my favorite Pokemon, as well as an interesting one to try out in the meta. Yeah, I'm just gonna be building so many teams. I, I hope that once the new season starts in January, like, maybe I'll, I'm, I'm gonna make way more videos, way more Battle Stadium singles videos than ever before. Like, I could see myself going like every other day or maybe even sometimes every day possibly because uh, there's just so much I wanna try out and yeah, I'm really, really excited. I think this is the most hyped I've been for a new season of Battle Stadium singles in Scarlet and Violet. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in the team code. Um, this was a good, a good video. I'm really happy because uh, the past few battle videos I've done haven't been the best for me. Like I've been losing a lot more than I like. <laughs> and this video really kind of turned that around. Uh, the team looked great and the battles were pretty good. I think that, you know, my opponents played decently well as well. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos, excuse me. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you all very soon.